Cyrus Mendenhall, who was Richard's brother, uh, was active in manufacturing arms for the Confederate Army down here in Oakdale, what's now, or was Oakdale Cotton mm -hmm. Mill. He did that all during the war until the war was over, and then he converted it to back to a, a cotton mill. Uh, one of the uh, coffins, uh, Zimri Smith coffin, uh, was not a Quaker at that time, but he came from a Quaker family who lived down along deep river south of here. He was the in charge of the Florence Armory, which was active all during the war and uh, was located I could show you where, up on East Fork Road, quite near uh, Deep River Meeting. So, and George C.'s son, James Ruffin Mendenhall, uh, ran, if you take this, go through the park, right down to where the little carousel is down there. Just beyond that, there was a woolen mill manufacturing cloth for, had a, a contract to, to do cloth for Confederate uniforms. And uh, Mr. Stanley, who lived cat a corner here, uh, designed the building, designed the mill, I believe, set up the I machinery. So. And uh, all of these folks, if they weren't active Quakers, they, they were, their families had been Quakers, and they were very mm -hmm. busy making money and making things. And, and also keep in mind that being a rifle maker as a Quaker is not necessarily inconsistent no. with the peace testimony. You and there's a history of yeah, exactly. Too. It's a part of your livelihood, right? Sure. So, well, and uh, you know, there's a tradition of like long rifle making, the James time rifles that dates back to the 1750s here in this area. But I think a lot of people were just too tempted with the idea. I think everybody and her brother started making rifles or weapons of some kind because they wanted to get that big contract yeah. with the Confederate States, Confederate Army. Yeah. And Cyrus, you know, is an excellent example. Uh, I, I kind of view him as the black sheep of the family, but he never really was ostracized by the family. No, he was a slave owner. And he was a slave owner. He, um, he bought and held slaves. He, um, you know, obviously produced... <laughs> uh, he went into business with a couple guys from up north and started the Mendenhall Jones and Gardner gun factory that, that uh, Mary mentioned, knowingly selling uh, uh, weapons to, to an army. Of course, intended to use them to kill other people. Now, that's another story as far as the peace testimony is concerned. Um, he was one of the most, uh, from a financial perspective, I think he was probably the most successful of the men and all children mm -hmm. from Richard and Mary. He was a lawyer, a, you know, an insurance agent, a, a real he, estate he had, uh, quite a high position, I think, with the North Carolina Railroad. He was the treasurer for a number of years, yeah, right. and uh, so, interesting guy. But the rifles, the Jamestown rifles, those really were Quaker products. Mm -hmm. They're, they are associated with the Quakers, and my goodness, they used rifles. My you goodness. know, they shot wolves and sold the scalps for, you could, it, you could, there was a bounty on wolves, it, you know, it, so really, they needed a rifle. You needed a mm -hmm. rifle to, you needed a rifle at mm -hmm. that time. But there, you know, you have these anachronistic judgments that are often leveled. Yeah. You know, we look, you know, and guns are viewed very differently by many people yeah. nowadays. But back then, like Mary said, they were an important part of your livelihood. You had to have you know, them. Yeah. Supplement your diet. And, mm -hmm. 